NAC Micromodular Server DX1000. The code name is Mercury. Well, recent days, FreeBSD is widely used for a variety of purposes. For example, storage servers, edge servers, feature-rich network appliances, embedded devices, home electric appliances, game consoles, etc. However, for high-performance computing, for density, high-density servers, you use Linux instead of FreeBSD. I gotta introduce about DX1000 high density server. It is a good choice as a FreeBSD based cluster system. Hi, I'm Daich, living in Tokyo, Japan. Ongs is my <coughs> first original IT startup company since 2002. It's a small company. And BSD Consulting is the next startup company aiming to support FreeBSD for enterprise companies. I am a FreeBSD committer since 2002, and I've been managing articles writing since 1998. Well, this is my activity, about my activity of FreeBSD community. Years ago, <coughs> we began, we have begun a study session of FreeBSD. It's called FreeBSD Benkyokai. It means the FreeBSD seminar, opened it roughly every month. Next, next seminar gonna be for teeth. <clears throat> it is delightful. I'll keep doing this activity as possible. First, I'm gonna talk about my intention of the session. Let's look at next page, supercomputer top 500 statistical data. Top 500 is one of the statistical lists of most powerful supercomputers. <clears throat> Top 5,000 list has been compiled twice a year since 1993 with help of high-performance computer experts, computational scientists, manufacturers, and inter internet communities. <coughs> the top 500 computers are ranked by their performance on the LIMPAC benchmark. The main objective of top 500 list is to provide a ranked list of general purpose system that I come and use for high end applications. Nowadays, the top 500 is a de facto standard as a supercomputer performance ranking list. <coughs> so top five project was started in 1993. <coughs> yes. As of November 2014, Top 500 supercomputers are mostly based on x86 bit CPUs. <coughs> In recent, recent years, heterogeneous computing, mostly using NVIDIA's graphic processing unit as coprocessor, has become a popular way to reach a better performance for what ratio and higher absolute performances. As you can see, Linux is a king of top 500 supercomputers. As of November 2014, 97% of the world's fastest computers are used the Linux kernel. <coughs> within those, mm, within those 97 of uh, the most powerful supercomputers, including those rankings at top 10. Well, how about the other operating system? That's Unix. <coughs> All soldiers never die, but fade away. The BSD based system, mm, fading completely. And Mac OS 10. Yes, it's crazy. <coughs> well, there is more to the story. FreeBSD. It is completely finished. I think that there are some reasons for FreeBSD's defeat of high performance computing. Historically, FreeBSD has been running on consumers' PC or low-spec and low-price Rockman servers for SOFO or edge server systems. Devices of high-performance computing has been expensive, but too costly for salmon to buy. Recent days, thanks to the FreeBC Foundation, FreeBC project has been acting with some hardware vendors. But in early stage of this project, we have few connections with few hardware banners. On the other hand, there were 
many Linux vendors that helps Linux run on high performance computing systems. We had a few enterprise friends. That was the biggest problem. <coughs> To establish a healthy relationship between vendors and the first project, it isn't an easy way, easy work for someone personally. As anyways, to improve these circumstances, I believe we have. <coughs> a key point for improving these circumstances is information sharing. This is my reason I'm here. <coughs> Yeah, recent, recent three years, I am working with NEC as a FreeBSD developer of BSD Consulting at Tokyo for verifying FreeBSD works, works well on NEC's, NEC Corporation's latest Rackman servers. The Micromodule Server DX1000 is the latest NEC's high-density Rackman server. NEC Corporation is a Japanese multinational provider of information technology services and products. NEC provides information technology and a network solution to business enterprises, communication services providers, and to government agencies. NEC has begun the computer research and the development in 1954, and they produced the first crossword switching system in Japan. Back today, NEC built the Earth Simulator Computer, the fastest supercomputer in the world from 2002 to 2004. NEC, one of the famous computer banners in Japan. The Micromodule Server DX1000 is one of the Express 5800 series machines. Express 5800 server family is the Rockman servers for enterprise customers. Micromodule server DX1000 is high-end model among Express 5800 series. It is too expensive for someone to buy. If you or your project team need FreeBSD high-density servers, even though DX1000 doesn't merge as a candidate, because they are learned English information about FreeBC and the D DX1000. Japan is an exception. Basic consulting, my company opened the verification report on, on the website. So who, who could read Japanese can catch FreeBC and the DX1000 easily? So I hope who has any chance to use expensive hardware, please try to test FreeBC work or not how to install and set up, what feature works or not, and open the result on the internet. <coughs> to open the, open and share the information of expensive hardware as a big step for FreeBSD access them. <coughs> I'm gonna introduce NEC Micromodule Server DX1000. This one. <coughs> DX1000 incorporates outstanding performance. Performance for what? flexibility and enterprise class reliability in extremely dense design. After the 2011 Tokyo earthquake and tsunami, performance per watt is an important criteria of server hardware in Japan. The DX1000, a two-u enclosure system with 46 Intel processor-based micromodule servers is designed for Lightweight scale out computing, such as web hosting and big data analytics, as well as cloud service providers. High density company node with the latest Intel Atom series, eight core processors, four DIMM slots, and one SSD slot. The DX1000 support operation in a 40 degree Celsius environment, which minimizes cooling costs. Shared farm and power supply designed with 80 plus platinum certified power supply, maximized the power efficiency. All modules and shared components, including fans, power supply units, search management modules, and switch modules, are hot swappable and easy to replace. The key point of using the DX1000 is to understand its structure and the relationship between modules. 
the DX1000 is consisted by five modules. One, network switch module. Two, CMM module. Three, server module. Four, hard disk modules. And five, fan module. In particular, to understand a relationship between switch mode, switch mode, switch modules, CMM modules, and server modules is important. If you don't understand like, its relationships, then you will fail to install FreeBSD. You could access to network switch modules through two serial consoles. Two serial consoles <coughs> at micro USB are on the, its front panel. First, you should access to network switch module and make its network structure and grabbing MAC address information of CMM modules and server modules. Network switch modules is a key point to use DX17. Oops. Next, you access the server modules using IPMA tool. In a stage, you must set up your own DHCP server and access to the CMM modules and the server modules. CMM and server modules are different configured for using DHCP to obtain their IP addresses. Next, access to the server module using the IPMM tool, set up BIOS, and install FreeBSD by Pixieboot. After installed, you could access the server module using SSH. Yeah, this is the photo of DX1000. The DX1000 enclosure two U size. It could include up to 46 CPU modules. CPU modules must include two CMM module. However, because of a limitation of the power units, to bring it all down to earth, four CPU modules are a limitation of CPU modules per enclosure. You could include 12 hard, hard disk modules per enclosure. There are 12 PCI Express slots per enclosure. You could use up to two network switch modules per enclosure. The phys physical module mount operation is easily like Lego blocks, easy push, easy pull. By simple calculation, for example, you could take 60 enclosures per rack. So you can have 608 server modules per rack. It means you have 4,864 threads per rack. If you make 10 beehive guests per server modules, you, you have 6,080 6, guests per rack. If you make 100 jail environment per, per uh, server module, you have 60,800 jail environments per rack. You can reduce the number of physical servers and their power consumption. NEC says you can reduce 70% power consumption. <clears throat> you have up to two network switch modules and each have 240 giga QSFP uprings, a 1,000 1, base T for management, and 40, 46 2.5 giga downlinks to server modules. The network switch module are a backbone of the DX1000. The network switch modules manage the DX1000 in the network structure. Users can access to each server modules or CMM modules through the network switch module. Share console port on, on the DX1000 front panel as a connect to the network switch module. You can log in into network switch modules through the serial console. Yeah, CMM module. CMM module manage other modules. You must uh, you must use two CMM modules per enclosure. One CMM module acts as active CMM modules, and the other acts as a standby module. Standby module does a few works. 
So it is not completely hot standby module. You need the both for enclosure. You can control CMO module using IPMR tools, power on, power off, soft reset to grab wrong information, cell information, or sensor information. On the left one is a sub module. The sub module is very similar to CMM modules. A sub module includes one processor, Intel Atom processor C2750 or C2730. Both have eight cores. The F24, DDR3, 1600, ECC, LBS, or DM slots. Maximum memory size is 32 gigabyte. One micro serial ATA SSS slot. They're up to 120 gigabyte storage size. IPMI 2.0 BMC port and 2.5 gigabit links to network switch modules. Sabah module isn't a high performance device. If you need a high performance node, the DX1000 isn't affordable. To bundle many physical servers into a rack or Computation using many servers like Hadoop is affordable use case for the DX1000. Hard disk modules. 2.5 inch serial ATA hard disk. You can choose 500 gigabyte or one terabyte. If we want to use hard modules, you should use Intel Atom processor C2750 modules. Uh, C 273 can't use hard disk module. Farm module, mm. you could have up to 10 farm modules per enclosure. The biggest problem of the DX1000 is these farm modules. The farm modules are very noisy. The sound is similar to that. 100 Dyson cleaners run in the same room at the same time, very noisy. Working with the DX1000 is in the same room and is impossible. You should run it in a data center, or at least you should run the DX1000 in another room. The power unit, while 160 watt, 80 plus certified hot per power supply unit. Yet, the front panel, the DX1000 has two serial consoles. You can access to the network switch module through these ports. But this is a simple diagram that describes the relationship among server modules, CM modules, network switch module, and a management terminal. By different settings, management run that IPM, IPM2 access is only through RJ45 interface. Accessing to sub-modules data line is only through QSFP interface. If we want to use RJ45 as data line interface 2, you must change the settings using the IPM2 and log in into network switch module and change network structure using SAM commands. I described the detail at Appendix A. This is a detailed specification sheet. The server module itself is a straightforward Intel Atom computer. When you mount the DX1000 to a rack, would you please read the user guide carefully and take operation? The DX1000 is lighter, lighter than the other similar products, but it is very heavy. So when you take manual work, please do carefully. The server module is straightforward at the machine. The freebies can handle, handle very easily. However, installation is a little bit confusion. You must connect the DX1000 and set up your own DHCP network. The DX1000 has two network switch module. You must set at least the first network switch module. First step, you should obtain MAC address of the CMM modules. You can obtain those information from network switch modules. So log in into the network switch modules through CDAP console on the right side, on the front panel. 
and type some commands. Serial consoles both rate is 115200 BPS. Different to user ID and a password, both admin, <coughs> all in small capital. Ref port is connected to the first network switch module. Right port is connected to second network switch module. The USB USB cable is included in the DX17 box. You can log in from FreeBSD's terminal using CU command, like this. Change the CUAU0 to your environment. The option S means bolt rate. The switch space greater than is a prompt of network switch module. You can change network structure using a command through, through that prompt. Next, you obtain MAC address of the network switch module and calculate MAC address of CMM modules from there. A little bit of confusion point. Enable and type show system. <coughs> the show system command shows the information about network switch modules. In this case, the 74D435E9E262 as MAC address of network switch module itself. You can cal calculate MAC address of a CMM module from this MAC address. And address subdirected one from MAC address of network switch module is the MAC address of ONS. And an address subdirected two from MAC address of network switch module is the MAC address of CMM module. In this case, ha 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 ha, 6 l is an address of CMM module. And you should obtain IP address assigned to MAC address of CMM module. The CMM module different network setting is the DSCP. So the CMM module have IP address already. You, if you use a FreeBSD as a DSCP server, log in into the FreeBSD DSCP server and obtain IP address by ARP common like those. In this case, IP address of CMM module is 19192168122. Nine. Next, you should obtain management portals MAC address of server modules. So um, unfortunately, the manage Anaba Nicholas command that is included in DX1000 utility disk is sent OS 6 binary. You must set up sent OS 6 to obtain the information. The, hmm. I think that send OS on Beehive is one of the way. <laughs> you give the CMM module's IP address to option I. You can obtain MAC address list of server modules on the enclosure. That's the same way. An address subtracted one from the MAC address of the server module's management port is a MAC address of server module's NIC number two. And an address subtracted two from the MAC address of the server module is yes, MAC address of the server module, NIC number one. That's a very confusing point. Well, so we grabbed it, obtained the MAC address list, <coughs> an IP address and a MAC address. <coughs> Write DHCPD conf file to assign IP address to CMM modules and server modules. Unit configuration for Pixie boot and the UF, uh, NFS too. The blue lines are the IP assignment to CMM modules <coughs> and server modules. The orange lines are configuration for Pixie boot and Netto file system. FreeBSD. Pixie boot takes three steps. First step is DHCP. Uh, FreeBSD host try to obtain IP address and TFTP information from DHCP server. The second step, the host try to roll the Pixie boot kernel from a T TFTP server. And third, the host try to roll the installer from an, from an NFS server. 
So you should set up a DHCP server, a TFT server, and an NFS server, each collectory. Privacy based system has no DHCP server, so install ISC DHCP server from package and set up. To enable DHCP server, write DHCP D enable yes into rc.com file. And edit the uh, ISC DHCP server's configuration file, dhcpd.conf. Look at two slides back. The Pixiboot kernel is loaded using TFTP. The TFT server is launched by INETD server. So add line INETD enable yes into rc.conf file. Next, edit INETD conf file. Remove a comment of TFTP line. The file name Pixiboot is defined in dhcpd.conf. The file name must be the same. In this case, Pixiboot file passes slash tftp boot slash md64 slash 10.1 slash pixiboot. They apply pixiboot kernel file under the, that directory. After pixiboot kernel roller, pixiboot kernel try to roll installer using NFS. Add those lines, add those lines <coughs> into the rc.com file and edit the export file correctly. In this case, the home Pixie FreeBC as a root path of FreeBC installer contents. This path is defined in the DHCP.com file too. The path name must be the same. Another home Pixie FreeBC directory, you need installer contents. Most easiest way to deploy installer contents is extract a base.txz included in the installer images. The MD config command can make a device file from, from the installer ISO image file, mount it, and extract base.txz file into home Pixie FreeBC directory. Next. Next step is important. To enable serial on LAN by default, edit installer contents before installation. First, add the serial console configuration into slash home slash pixie freebst slash etc slash loader.com file and the boot slash home slash pixie boot slash boot oh this is long my god <laughs> uh, boot boot loader.com file yeah and next is the home pixie boot etc and wise. So change the line TTYU2, <coughs> unsecure to unsecure. Network switch module running, same module running, and a Pixiboot environment works well. Next is installation. The power, power on the target sub modules using the IPMF2 like this. <coughs> and connect to the sub-module through serial on LAN using IPMI2 commands. By serial on LAN, you can manage your sub-modules like a common PC from your terminal applications like those. <clears throat> when this startup screen, type function two and into by settings screen. This is the BIOS setting screen of server modules. You can set up BIOS through IPM2. Select the boot menu and change boot sequence, sequence order. The Pixie boot is the first pri priority boot way. Save configuration and reboot. This is a Pixie boot sequence screen. IP address is assigned and trying to Wrote Pixie Boot kernel using TFTP. A Pixie Boot kernel loaded. <coughs> On the boot sequence, you should type terminal type BT100 or X term as an adequate choice. After this screen, install operation is the same as common PC. Well, installing about 100 sub-modules by hand isn't a reasonable idea. 
custom the installer, and the installation work automatically is a reasonable way. Conclusion. So, NHG Micromodule Server DX170 is affordable as Hadoop clusters, high computational works using many hosts, or to bundle many physical servers into a rack. Low power consumption and high space efficiency reduce a lot of running cost. The conclusion, you can use FreeBSD on the Micromodule Server DX170. However, the installation is a little bit confusion. To understand the relation and structure of each module helps you to do that. Sample modules are straightforward Intel Atom machine. After installation, it works well. Uh, I have two appendix. First is about QSFP as a date run. Yes? Camry. People don't have QSFP interface. As server module have three NIC port, the two of those are date run and the other for management run. A network switch module has three interfaces too. Two of those are QSFP interface and the other is RJ45. By default, data run of server module connected to QSFP of network switch module and the management run of server modules connected to RJ45 port of network switch module. In some cases, you want to use RJ45 interface for both data run and management run, and it's possible. But a little bit confusion way. <laughs> After boot, first change configuration by using IPM2 like those. There are vendor-specific commands to change the network structure. <coughs> and next, login into network switch module through serial consoles on the front of the DX1000. <coughs> and type commands like those. <coughs> That's it. So this change will destroy after reboot the DX1000. So if we want to RJ45 for the both data run and management run, which consider to use old typing feature of any terminal applications, always by hand is yes, not reasonable. Yes, at rust. If you want to buy DX1000, then no problem. And I see has contact point at Euro, US, and Asia Pacific regions. Who want to buy this device? Hands up. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so North America, NSC Corporation of America is contact point. And Euro, NSC Enterprise Solutions is that. And Asia Pacific regions, NSC Corporation is access point. Yes, my story is down. Any questions? <laughs> yeah? I, I like to add that uh, Zinus is currently getting the hardware certification for the DX1000. So that could be very uh, interesting. Some people are looking at the DX1000 for a Java device. I was in uh, two weeks ago the release of Arduino. By a company called Principal Technology on that machine. It's a very highly efficient uh, machine, very, very sorry to hear. I don't want to make a speech for a partner in the scene, but it's something that if you're looking at high deployment, uh, it's one of the best. We, Zinus, will take an endorsement, but it's one of the best you can look at. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I think we agree with that. Mm. So it should be hardware certified on FreeBSD before too long. Once they can ship it. <laughs> Other questions? Yes? So the switch module that's there, uh, that, that functions as a you know, multi capable switch across all of the, the, uh, of the hardware servers? All of the, all of the 
server modules participating and being able to get uh, access to the switch modules? Yes. You can set up various uh, server modules and VLANs or whatever you are. Yes, yes. You can construct any types of networks through the network module. Yeah? Did you try to uh, bring up external Br Bring the what? The ERAM, XFC or anything like node free. Did you try to bring a graphic interface on it? I don't know the graphic interface. And this person said the CLI only. Yeah, but you have a VGA equivalent into the machine, which we have not seen or, or, or know nothing about it. Um, each module has a BMC port, yeah. so you can control through the web browser and the web, web ZUI. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah? Good question. Uh, it depends on the sales. If big sale, this product, NOC developed the next high performance version of this product. But sales. No. <laughs> <laughs> Single socket? Yeah, on, on the CPU modules, how many cores? How many cores? Uh, 16 how many cores. Did you put 15 cores on a socket? On the SMC3 socket? One CPU core, uh, each sub module. So the single core? Yes. Modules. Single a core. Eight, that is eight core modules. Yeah. Eight core. About 46, 46 modules. 46 modules. It's, so that's right, right. That is sa sales, sales point. That is not realistic answer. So anyone can't use a 64 modules at the same time because of the limitation of the power unit. Right. So, so that. 38, I think you mentioned 38 for size. Yeah, and 40, 40 is the realistic limitation. 40, 40 yeah. And that includes the two CMM modules, so 30, 38 sub modules per eye enclosure is a limitation. Any, any other question? Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.